And now time for another question of the day. Which Hollywood icon, whose legacy far transcends beyond the blonde bombshell she was known as, passed away 60 years ago today? Well, that would be none other than Marilyn Monroe. Joining us now for more on this, let's welcome in CEO and founder of TV Guestbert and host of Front and Center, Jackie Jordan, and host of Apple's Top 10 Naughty But Nice podcast and author of The Four Word Answer, Rob Shooter. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Rob, I'll start with you. Marilyn Monroe died 60 years ago today. Day. She was only 36 years old. Give us a little insight into the legacy she left behind and why we're still fascinated with her to this day. Yeah, such a superstar. So during her life, she was one of the top box office drawers. This wasn't somebody who suddenly became very, very famous after they died. She was really, really famous while she was um, still alive. But since her death, she's gone on to become an icon. I think not only the way she died, but the body of work that she left behind all tied this up together to make her today maybe more relevant than ever, ever before. Yeah, absolutely. Jackie, what mark did she leave on Hollywood? Is there anything or anyone who compares to the work uh, that she did and how popular she was back in the 50s and, and early 60s? Well, you know, I, I, in preparing for this segment, I did some research and looked at the trailer and teaser from Netflix's Blonde, mm. and it received a combined 12 million views for just a couple days of release, just for the trailer and the teaser, which just goes to show her post-mortem interest is still very active 60 years later. And ironically, I used to live near her house where she uh, died in Brentwood, California, and it was a very understated, obscure little house in Brentwood. It wasn't a big, fancy Beverly Hills house or one in the Hollywood Hills that many other actors and celebrities of her era actually had those homes, but she didn't actually have that. And we also know that her estate made way more money uh, post-mortem than it did when she was alive. Yeah, you're so right. I, I watched a documentary on her, and I was surprised. Uh, the home that she lived in, you know, you would have thought that she lived in this this fancy mansion, but it certainly wasn't Definitely. that. We are, we're going to get to that, that movie in just a bit. Rob, uh, the brand of Marilyn Monroe, though, she was far more than just Norma Jean uh, Mortensen. You know, her image was a subject for many artists, commercials. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, she created that. She was born Norma Jean, an author, in 1926. And then 20 years later, she created Marilyn Monroe. Some people might not know she's not naturally a blonde. She has dark hair. And when she was in her 20s, she, she went blonde, created this amazing, amazing sort of icon even then. Also, too, I think we shouldn't underestimate her power in Hollywood. She was one of the few women back then who had her own production company. She was very, very much involved in creating this whole mystique, this whole image of Marilyn Monroe, which really is still now alive today. You don't have to look any further than the Met Ball when Kim Kardashian decided to wear yeah. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's so interesting because we talk about the brand. She really, I think, was the first person to create her own brand. Um, Jackie, I do want to go to you because, as you alluded to earlier, there's this new movie out, um, and there's a little bit of controversy over Anna de Mars. So she was the she's the actress playing Marilyn Monroe. But once the trailer was released, some are criticizing her. They're saying that the Cuban actress's accent slips through, that the casting is not right. Um, although the owner of Monroe's state has defended the actress, what are your thoughts? and what are you hearing? Well, also, Brad Pitt has stepped up and defended the actress in this role, and it's very interesting because I think the basis of the, uh, the, 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 um, the blonde on Netflix is about the fact that Norma Jean was conflicted about the very character that she created, or the archetype she created of Marilyn Monroe, and then suffered in that role, that, that persona that she benefited from but also became imprisoned to. And I, I think about uh, modern-day Britney Spears, Spears almost um, experiencing that same kind of uh, torture of creating or becoming an archetype that is way beyond um, who she actually wants to be in, for herself. But uh, when regarding Ana de Armas, I think she was a fascinating uh, a character, uh, actress to be picked for this role of, of Marilyn Monroe. And I think I haven't seen the whole the movie yet, but it will be really interesting to see if she can carry it. I mean, I had trouble when Nicole Kidman did uh, Lucille Ball, but mm -hmm. I was able to get quickly into it and forget that Nicole Kidman was playing Lucille Ball. So, we, yeah. you know, it remains to be seen whether Ana de Armas can actually carry off Marilyn Monroe. 
Um, but I actually think that Britney Spears would have been a more, way more interesting choice for that part, but that's yeah. just me. I, Rob, you know, to, to portray an actress or an actor, it takes so much work, um, you know, and I think that I've been reading a lot about this and for them to give her so much criticism before, you know, people have really even seen it, uh, you know, it's, it's really harsh and Hollywood is really harsh, aren't they? Yeah, I think Anna knew that, that this was coming. She's playing one of the most iconic people in the world. Recently, this happened with Kristen Stewart when she did the Princess Diana movie. Yeah. These people are so well known. It's very, very difficult to take on these roles. However, the rewards are awfully good when you do this. The Oscars, all the awards, they love, love, love actresses, actors who take on icons like this. So maybe down the road, this is going to pay off very well for Anna. Yeah. I, There's I, so I... many actresses that have done this too. We think about Natalie Portman for Jackie Kennedy, mm -hmm. uh, Austin, who just do, was doing Elvis this year. And the, and the oh, yeah, that's doing really and, well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a you know a lot of the actresses like like the steep edge of taking on these mm -hmm. uh, these big iconic characters. Well, I can't wait to see it. Appreciate your insight, Jackie Jordan, Rob Shooter. Always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you.